published by the New Lines Institute for Strategy and Policy clearly and thoroughly show uh, shows how the um, Chinese government bears state responsibility in relation to the Article 2 of the Genocide Convention uh, regarding human rights violations perpetrated against the Uyghur population within its territory. So in this light, I will be talking to Georgie Tatar today, a specialist who has provided a consultancy to the Institute for the preparation of uh, the report. And that was very kind to agree to have a brief chat with me today. So uh, good morning, Georgie. I hope everything's fine. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it's a nice day today, so let's let's go ahead. Great. Um, so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your organization and um, who you are to introduce uh, it to our listeners. Actually, my organization's name is um, the Foundation for the International Prevention of Genocide and Mass Atrocities. And our operational body is the um, so-called Budapest Center for uh, Mass Atrocities uh, Prevention. Uh, so we use uh, these two names. Uh, we are an unbiased uh, international organization which is registered in, in Budapest. Uh, just 10 years ago, we started uh, our, ex uh, our activities and uh, we basically we are prevent uh, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, tragedies uh, in the world. And we try to promote the implementation of the uh, principle of the responsibility to protect. Uh, um, and uh, generally, we we try to um, uh, make advocacy uh, for uh, the implementation of this uh, principle to build up capabilities, capacities uh, in the international uh, arena actors. Uh, we are in touch with regional organizations, with uh, uh, big international organizations, uh, governments. Uh, geographically, we work uh, worldwide, uh, definitely, but for the last few years, we focus uh, obviously on, on Europe, on, on Central Europe, uh, and uh, we try to build up uh, capabilities in, in, uh, in, in this region, and we have a special focus on youth, uh, as we think that uh, the uh, youth is the agent uh, of the of changes. So. Great. Um, so I understand you are a former dip diplomat. Could you extend a little bit on how did you yeah. begin this work genocide? I uh, I am uh, really I have spent uh, more than three decades in bilateral diplomacy as a member of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Hungary. Uh, and afterwards I, I uh, switched to the um, European Union um, the Council Secretariat of the European Union, uh, where uh, I was uh, head of a small task force uh, which worked uh, for the um, uh, high representative of the uh, European Union for um, Foreign Affairs. Um, uh, and uh, I was responsible for horizontal security issues and uh, for prevention of violent conflicts. And there where we started uh, and I have started to work uh, uh, more thoroughly on prevention of genocide and prevention of these uh, uh, gravest uh, international crimes under international law. Uh, and so then I afterwards, uh, when I my contract uh, with the European Council, with the Council, the Secretariat has um, finished uh, to uh, establish this foundation. And uh, since 10 years uh, in charge, I'm in charge of this foundation and uh, and uh, try to find basically uh, these crimes. That's amazing. Um, so what in your, in your opinion, the distinctive characteristics uh, in the way that the Uyghur genocide has been undertaken? And uh, where is this particular relevance within the current international landscape? So in other words, in your opinion, what is at stake right now? Actually, we have to we have to know that uh, the uh, we obviously the Budapest Center uh, pays attention to any uh, tragic event in the world which uh, is uh, 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 genocide or these uh, these uh, grave uh, the grave uh, gravest crimes uh, in the international uh, arena. Uh, 
but we do pay a specific attention to the case of Uyghurs because uh, this is something uh, which is uh, not very usual. Um, firstly, um, we have to know that uh, the, 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 these crimes, uh, what, we, what, we, what, we, what we speak about, uh, these are uh, really uh, very, uh, very, very, very grave, uh, grave and, uh, and extreme. And uh, these are uh, the, the so-called responsibility to protect the, the four principles, the four crimes. This is genocide, ethnic cleansing, uh, crimes, uh, war crimes and crimes uh, against uh, humanity. And uh, uh, the international experts uh, speak about these crimes uh, that uh, that these have been perpetrated by the uh, Chinese authorities for the last few years and started uh, collecting uh, documentation. Uh, what is specific uh, in, in the current situation that uh, in the in this uh, report quoted uh, by you, um, we we also spoke about the that it is not just about the perpetration of the crimes, but also the intent to perpetrate uh, genocide is already punished uh, by the uh, UN uh, Genocide Convention, which was adopted in uh, 1948. And uh, and uh, therefore, and when when we can already find some documents which uh, speak about the intent uh, of the Chinese government uh, to um, to uh, perpetrate uh, these uh, these crimes, and let me just uh, quote here uh, two two things. Uh, one is the religious uh, official in in China. Uh, has published a, 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 a phrase uh, on its on his uh, uh, Xinhua uh, Weibo page in uh, on the 10th of August uh, 2017, where he spoke about to break the uh, and I quote it to break their leverage, uh, 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 break their roots, break their um, uh, connections break their origins. So this is and this is about the about the Uyghurs. And uh, let me also quote another document uh, which was adopted by the Chinese government in 2010, uh, uh, which uh, speaks about the in, in May 2010. It speaks about uh, uh, the the strike uh, strike hard campaign against violent terrorism in Xinjiang. Uyghur autonomous region against Uyghurs uh, and Turkic uh, uh, Muslims. So uh, this is a very clear, uh, these are very clear document about the intention, whether they have done it or not, this could be disputed, but this has been, this is, uh, this, uh, this is a, a document. So this is one of the first things which is very specific. The second one, and I will be a bit shorter, which uh, that the, that these uh, crimes have been perpetrated or intended to be perpetrated uh, by uh, the per one of the permanent members of the Security Council uh, of the of the UN, which has not happened uh, since the the Cold War uh, finished uh, for the last uh, 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 thirty years. The, the next point, which is uh, also very 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 important, uh, that the that the, it it happens under the reference uh, of fight against extremism. And here that might uh, uh, serve as a very bad uh, precedent that uh, under the flag of combating extremism, uh, we, we, any, any state may perpetrate uh, uh, these, these crimes against, uh, uh, against a, a, a minority. And the next point is uh, government has started fighting uh, in the spirit of collective guilt and in the spirit uh, of collective punishment uh, against uh, against a, a minority, uh, and this is uh, this has never happened. And one more last point, which is which makes uh, this case very uh, very uh, specific, that this is the first time that uh, the uh, tools of artificial intelligence. The tools of uh, surveillance uh, have been applied uh, to uh, perpetrate these sort of uh, grave, grave uh, crimes. So, uh, because the, the tools of uh, artificial intelligence, which could be used for uh, surveillance, monitoring, uh, uh, 
um, also uh, to also to develop the, and apply leather weapons uh, against uh, minorities, um, social media uh, uh, to uh, amplify uh, hatred uh, and uh, sentiments that, uh, against uh, against groups, against minority groups. Uh, so this is uh, a threat and this is a risk which will have to be responded uh, uh, properly by the international uh, community and uh, which uh, has not paid uh, the due attention uh, to these risks and to uh, therefore the Budapest Center will want to uh, call the attention of the international community uh, to this new emerging uh, risk. Uh, the, uh, those who are interested in this topic uh, may read uh, several articles written uh, by the uh, by the Budapest Center in uh, in, in in that regard. Um, so this is the why we do pay specific attention to this uh, situation. Situation is very grim indeed. Um, so you said before that um, the strike hard campaign, campaign, for example, began in 2010, so more than 10 years ago. And I believe that given the whole troublesome history of ethnic conflict between the Uyghurs and the Han Chinese in China, um, I mean, this stresses the fact that we must um, pressure on the um, prevention of genocide and um, respond right away when we see that it is a, there is a preparation underway. So in this light, what is your opinion regarding the international response to the, to the issue so far? The point is that uh, until now, what we can see is that uh, the situation is as usual. You know, there are some countries uh, which uh, claim and blame the uh, uh, Chinese authorities. They perpetrate uh, genocide, uh, crimes against humanity. Uh, there are a lot of uh, documents, and the other part, uh, the other part of the uh, group of the countries uh, behind the Chinese, they state dismiss uh, the the all these claims. Uh, so there is a, a sort of stalemate in this uh, situation. Um, whilst um, the, the the point here is uh, that uh, after the uh, after the Cold War, um, as as I mentioned to you, uh, if permanent members of the Security Council will not be able uh, to address uh, this, this uh, uh, situation properly address and efficiently, effectively address, then that would undermine the significance of the permanent members of the uh, Security Council, which is uh, a very uh, uh, sensitive, uh, sensitive issue, particularly um, in, uh, today, when we are uh, in a, in a, uh, we can be can, can witness the change in the international situation. The uh, the the uh, multipolar world uh, emerges, and we need to we need this in the new world. We'll have to also properly address uh, this situation. So at stake, this is also whether the the this very uh, serious situation will become victim of the geopolitical rivalry or the Security Council, the permanent members will be able to address this situation. And uh, from the point of view of the documents which have been adopted in 40, 1948, but also I can uh, refer here to the document adopted uh, in 2005 about the adoption of the responsibility to protect, which also um, um, enables this, the international community, first of all, uh, to help uh, any any state not to commit uh, these four crimes, the R2P crimes, and then uh, to also uh, uh, adopt measures, even coercive measures, to uh, to to stop uh, these uh, uh, the perpetration of of, of, of these crimes. So uh, the, the, at the stake, we, we see here the um, reputation and the credibility uh, of the of the uh, sec permanent members of the of the Security Council. So what we could do, uh, and what there are a lot of a lot of uh, uh, proposals on the table, and let me also just refer here to the 
to the uh, recent report uh, published by the uh, Human Rights Watch, which uh, lists a lot of uh, or a lot of uh, measures. But we, as Budapest Center, we will want uh, to um, uh, add two things. Um, uh, what what is not not listed so far by any organization. First of all, that uh, we want that uh, the if the Security Council, the permanent members, are not able to address this situation, then we need to find another forum within the UN, which is uh, able to address the situation. And for that, the General Assembly is properly entitled to do it, to do that. So if in the new situation this due to the geopolitical rivalry and the international community is not able to address this situation, then we need uh, to uh, to turn to another forum. This first. The second point is and this is also in the spirit of the of the of the actions and activities of the of the Budapest Center, uh, we uh, do call the, the attention of the of the international community to the obligation of each state uh, to build up its own capabilities to get immune from the from the perpetration of mass atrocities. Uh, until now, we have spoken a lot that uh, no state uh, is immune uh, from mass atrocities, and this is correct. But this is high time to act, to do something uh, to get immune. So for that reason, we propose that each state uh, uh, makes, uh, re revisits its own national capabilities to, uh, to uh, and then check whether they are able uh, to get immune uh, 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 of, of mass atrocity crimes and uh, the national international community will have to adopt some benchmarks for that that according to agreed uh, benchmarks this sort of uh, investigation of, uh, of um, uh, national capabilities will takes will take place in a, in the foreseeable in the foreseeable uh, future actually all that what I what I here uh, mentioned uh, uh, for the last few uh, minutes, uh, will uh, is summarized in my in my two pager, which uh, which is um, uh, on the website of the Budapest Center for Mass Atrocities Prevention. And uh, if you want to read it uh, more carefully, uh, please uh, feel free to do that. Great. Great. Um, so you've said before. Uh, you've talked about just before about uh, the possible creation of another forum uh, within or utilization of another forum within the UN. So, um, given the extreme politicization of this issue and of the political crisis even within the Security Council, so do you think that the failure, the past failure that um, the man of, in the management of this issue could bring about a further debates on the um, Security Council reform, for example, because um, our international system in the, um, the UN, most of the UN um, treaties, for example, are incredibly voluntary. So China, for example, hasn't even uh, signed the Rome, the Rome Convention, for example, so we'd have to strike out personal responsibility, individual responsibility out of the table due to uh, the failure to even sign and ratify uh, conventions and uh, covenants. So what opinion about? Uh, look, I think as I mentioned to you, we are uh, in, a, in a new era of the international uh, uh, community. We live in a new era and um, uh, this is uh, a, a transition uh, period. So the bipolar and then unipolar world uh, has has changed, and right now we speak about a multipolar uh, world. Uh, even in the past, uh, the the international community was not very successful uh, in uh, in addressing uh, the 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 wars, the interstate wars. Uh, and right now, for the last few decades, we are witnessing uh, many uh, intra-state 
affairs which threatens the lives of uh, populations. Uh, so we need to introduce uh, definitely uh, new uh, methods, uh, new measures uh, which protect much better the populations uh, from uh, these, uh, in general term, the security of the of the populations. So the human security will have to be much better protected uh, and prevented from uh, from uh, perpetration of, of, of crimes. Um, whatever will uh, improve the possibilities of the international community to prevent and to halt these crimes, uh, for me, it's uh, it's uh, a step a step forward, and I I don't want to um, to to, uh, to to push something which is not feasible. You know, a, a diplomat uh, will have to see also the frameworks, but it is definitely a point uh, that we need to do something and to find new measures, new tools, new framework, which uh, much better protect. The, uh, the, uh, the 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 population uh, from from these uh, from these crimes. Thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciated it. Thank you very much. Thank thank you very much.